hey, we're here. Oh, no. Uh, oh. Welcome. Why? Why are we on? Because it's time. Yep. Uh. Welcome to Anime FMK aboard an old wooden sailing ship. Yep. We got brand new set here. What we do not have yet is a way to affix the normal FMK backdrop uh, to it. So, yeah, that's why that's yeah. why we've got wood planing. Well, you know, wood slabs, wood... None of it's wood. It's not real wood, but it looks real nice. No, it's, it? it's all real wood. It is real. Yeah, yeah. Oh. I mean, it's not like boards like that. It's plywood that has been. Ah. Yeah, but I mean, it's all wood, except for the <laughs> nails. The nails are metal. Tungsten. Real wood. I can ha hold up. Tungsten. That high and temperatures. Oh. And Im oh. An important material, as we'll <laughs> soon learn. Oh my God, I've got opinions. Uh. So hey, we're talking about My Hero Academia episode what? Episode 54, Woo I think, unless I forgot to update <clears throat> the episode number. Some episodes. That sounds right. Yeah. I'll believe it's you. It's in the 50s. For now. Jojo Boy uses a magic whirlwind that only affects balls and passes the provisional licensing exam quickly, whilst Negadeku uses an earthquake attack that splits up the UA students. Deku is attacked by a tasteful amount of cleavage in a cat suit. <laughs> That can shapeshift into Gravity Girl, but he's saved by Tape Boy and the real Gravity Girl. Meanwhile, Icy Hot squares off against several primary colored ninjas. Yes, yeah. that's what we're what we're dealing with today. Yep. <laughs> so uh, yeah, Miss uh, Miss is, is she Shiketsu? I can't remember. Is Shiketsu or uh, the other school? The one that's she fighting. Goes, she goes to the school with Earthquake Kid. Not with yeah, the one with the hats. Yeah, are they Shiketsu? Sounds right. Yeah. Wait. Um, then maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember what school <laughs> she went to. Either yeah. way, she shows up. Rival right. schools for the yeah. SNES. Uh, nope. Uh, PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Damn it. Sorry. You win. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I... <laughs> There's a lot, I feel like there's a lot that goes on in this episode in terms of actual action. There's all these different uh, events taking place. Uh, we have Deku. We have, so we find out that that one dude has earthquake powers, which yep. is cool. Yeah. That, like, earthquake. Well, vibration specific. Yeah, yes. yeah, that, that's true. Um, we also get to see a couple other characters really put some of their powers to use. We see uh, uh, Airphone Jack girl, mm -hmm. she can now use her sound to basically do something similar. She uh, she concentrates all of her sound to the ground and blows up the uh, <laughs> blows up the earth, and that was pretty neat. Yep. So now uh, series continues in space uh, amongst the debris <laughs> as the earth has been shattered apart by sound waves. Yep. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm just yes anding. I didn't actually watch the episode. I can believe that. <laughs> At this point, I'm like, you know what? I've missed plenty of these episodes. So, um, we also have, yeah, that that no. chick. No, uh, <laughs> my hero is one of the few shows that I would miss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it would feel bad if it disappeared. Uh, I was really glad we got to see Saro, Tape Boy. One, yeah. do something, and two, have more than, I think, one line in an episode, which I think is now his series max at this yep. point. Oh my god, uh, you're right. Because he never gets to do anything other than Animal Kid, whose bit is literally, he doesn't like to talk, so he never talks. I think he has spoken the least out of the 1A crew, because even Tail Kid has had extra lines to reference, all I have is a tail. <laughs> like, so... I really it was, like. I it was really good like, to get to see him do something, be a bit of a character in that he's like, "You're in such a lucky position, Deku, getting attacked by a naked girl," and then being like, "You saw her rocket naked?" Like just like well, him getting all excitable. At least lets him do something, which I really appreciate it because I love his character design and he's basically like almost Spider Man. So I'm sure he can have some really cool adventures and some fun tape swinging times. <laughs> yeah, I like his. And again, I like his new design. I do like the use of his powers right now. It's a, uh, it's good, it's good fit for him. He is obviously one of those characters who's not exactly in line to get a story about him. But yeah. whenever, anytime he shows up, he always gets to do something at least a little bit interesting with his power. Yeah, and he, and he got that perfect. There has been no actual time skip, but this very much feels like that post time skip. Everybody's got a little yeah, something. Everybody extra. leveled up, and we got to show you what what perks they took. Yeah, yeah, so we got that perfect post time skip introduction. Like, oh shit, look at my three strings <laughs> of tape now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I also like the fact that so Deku's fighting this girl who, who can shapeshift. 
Um, yep. And so when uh, when she turns into Ochako, uh, and he's you know he's peeking out around the corner, and she tries to tag him, and he's like, "Bitch, nah, you ain't Ochako. I knew that the moment I grabbed your ass." And she's like, "What? Yeah. Why, and, would, why would you do that?" And that was that was super satisfying because the whole time I'm thinking, you know what, this show is usually way better. She's been so useless this whole episode. This does not seem right. Yeah. And having that paid off, like, oh shit, I'm not crazy. <laughs> this show is being smarter than I'm giving it credit for. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it's it's doing the old making me mad by making me think it's doing something bad. But then when it goes like, no, we knew the whole time. It's like, oh, you're so good. <laughs> That's kind of Horikoshi, and uh, like he does that a lot. He makes you think that he's doing something either tired or cliche or just kind of bad. And then <laughs> next thing you know, he does something really cool. And it's like, yeah. shit, I should have trusted <laughs> I him. Should, I should have faith. You've done this to me so many times. <laughs> um, but yeah. And also, I'm really happy because a couple episodes ago, I felt like the animation like was very limited for one episode, like mm -hmm. noticeably limited. And the last couple episodes have been doing some pretty cool stuff. And we see it, we get to see the, a lot of that here, especially with um, uh, Shiketsu Girl's acrobatics. I really like that stuff. Yeah, and I liked how she was like, basically, she kind of leans in when she's fighting him and goes like, no, what I do is I'll throw your attention away, and then after that, I'll hold my breath and basically disappear. She's and using at, fucking Zetsu from Hunter Hunter. Yeah, at first, the way she describes it, I was like, okay, so that's her power? Like, right. she can just go undetected so long as someone isn't looking directly at her? Okay, I get that. But then she's like, no, I can shapeshift. I'm just really good at martial arts and <laughs> fighting and dealing with situations. Because, hey, guess what? While you guys were busy having experiences, we were just being straight up taught what you were having to adapt to. <laughs> and, hey, sometimes that works really well, too. Yeah. Now, there's something in this episode that... Okay. In the opening, there are three very specific shots that started getting questions from people. Mm -hmm. There are some people in the opening who aren't in the manga. Interesting. Yeah. And our ninja core, like our ninja guys? Yeah, nah. Mm. <laughs> ninja Squad is, is a anime exclusive? Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, That's, something, something mm. that My Hero Academia, <laughs> hence to forth, has avoid, avoided doing almost all together. It's had like one or two filler episodes. Maybe three all total in like 54, which is pretty cool. Um, and one of them was a recap episode. And the other one I actually liked because it was all about Sue and uh, and, and Her working with the Otter Man. Yeah. yeah. That, was a, that was a real cool episode. Yeah. That, um, so we're getting filler in the action here, which if you're going to do it anywhere, That's a good this place to is put a it. perfect place because the manga itself intentionally, like, uh, intentionally or un avoided going into almost any of the other schools. Like, hmm. it focused on three. So if if this is just them, like, all right, we have enough material for 10 episodes. We need 13 episodes worth of material. All right, he, here, have some, like, ninjas who can grow. Like, <laughs> yeah, have a know. ninja, one of them can grow tungsten. <laughs> yeah. Like, it... I, I will say I also noticed a, a few more egregious flashbacks to, like the last episode or yeah. two than I am accustomed to from this show. It feels like they're padding it a little. It's not bad by, like, shonen standards by any means. Yeah. This was this was uh, one of the few episodes where, because since I don't have to watch nearly as much anime as you gentlemen, uh, <laughs> when I watch this on Saturday, normally by the time Sunday wraps around, I'm like, I want to watch that episode again because it was good, and I want to make sure I've got it, like, in my mind. This was one of the first ones in a while that I've had to be like, that one just seemed kind of okay. I'll watch it again, I guess. But it was like not something I was like psyched to do. And I'm hoping this this picks up a bit more because <laughs> as as of this week, yeah, it, it I, was kind of a like I, like it was still good. And like you know, as we've said before, these things are always just kind of a formality. Yeah, you're always going to have a little bit of an up and down, especially. Yeah. Especially as you've just entered into an arc, you're always kind of seeing, trying to see where it's going to go, how it's going to develop. Um, but quite frankly, uh, there's still a lot to like here um, mm -hmm. because it, it's showing a lot of the characters' uh, new moves off. It, it shows off their development as people. We, again, we get to see Deku. Like, Deku, again, Deku's response to uh, the Shiketsu girl was really great. It showed not only development of, of him as a fighter, but he's also recognizing his other students' qualities. And, and also... Man, I want to see Ochika use that floating ability more because yeah, they did the flashback to it and it was really cool looking. I'm like, yeah, that is really neat. 
But uh, and we got to see Wind Guy gets the pass oh, just immediately knocks yeah. out like a hundred people or whatever the hell. Yeah, he. Uh, I remember reading that in the manga, and I was like, oh shit. Yeah, that guy's that guy's a that guy's a deal. He's, yeah, he he's, seems he's he seems like he's gonna be. I, I'm getting very strong like. End of season, like we'll or like later in the season is when we get the real showdown with him. Because right now he, they they are showing him off as like the look at this force to be reckoned with. Like we're gonna have to go through two whole tests watching him pass with flying colors before the third one where we're actually gonna have to meet. Yeah, he's he's pretty neat. He shows off his wind abilities here. Um, they're kind of a little bit confusing because he picks up all the balls and nothing else. Yeah. And maybe he just focuses his wind in certain locations, but that's a little weird. I'm, uh, not sure, I'm not sure how that worked. I mean, at that point, that's less wind and more just telekinesis, which if, th if that's what his ability is, then sure, but why do we got all these wind effects going with them? I think it's just the balls are significantly lighter than the people holding them. So he's just like, I am sending enough wind that like it'll be tough to keep your grip on this smooth round ball, but not so much so that it's going to be blowing you away. Um, and maybe? like I don't know, it's <laughs> one of those like probably just a uh, you know suspend disbelief for a second. The wind blew so hard, everybody dropped the balls they were holding, and uh, you know then had their balls dropped on them. Speaking of suspension of disbelief, I gotta wonder. So is is shape shifty girl just the only one who thought of, hey, if the targets are on my costume, I'll just take off the costume and and do this naked. Like, is that, a, is that a legit tactic? Could everybody be doing this? I'm kind of curious. Uh, he did say that you cannot cover them. Mm -hmm. uh, they cannot be protected by anything. I'm not sure. I'm actually uncertain. Uh, also, very interesting, the approach that they took in the anime. In the manga, she just naked, like, full mm -hmm. out, like, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, since it's a manga, they're able to cover the you bits. don't have to worry about those frames of her moving and yeah. not showing little bits. Here, though, they they recolor her skin a little bit uh, to make it look like she's kind of wearing a skin suit. Yeah. And they cover her, her breasts and that goo. So it's a little like, okay. I mean, presumably, this is like part of her shape-shifting. If she does yeah. not want to manifest bits that she would not want others to see, she doesn't have to. Yeah. That's my headcanon, anyway. Also, wasn't her, like, the shape-shifting thing melting off a lot more horrific in the manga. I mean, it probably. It, it is It is pretty It is pretty creepy in the manga. Here, I mean, you only see a little bit of it. It's his so. pace, but I thought it was like in the manga. Wasn't it like Uraka's like face melting off of hers? I mean, that's what happens we, in this we, one. We see it. It's just very quick. Yeah. Like probably in the manga with having time to stare at a frame and be like, oh God, that's Uraka melting. <laughs> yeah. Probably a bit more alarming than seeing it in a second in an animation. Um, but yeah, she does that. And then my thought is if her targets are still on her clothes where she left somewhere, what's to say someone doesn't stumble upon those clothes and just go boop, boop, boop. All right, got her. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. We'll see. We'll see. So, other, other thing that we haven't really touched on, we got introduced to another character who I've been calling Ersatz Tamari, who can pull herself into herself. Yeah, the turtle oh, yeah. girl. Yeah, we get to see a little bit of her. Yeah, she's, uh, she's got a, a unique enough character design, and they make sure to establish her powers that I'm assuming she becomes important, but I don't see how. <laughs> <laughs> that's she's so thing. good at avoiding things. Yeah, that's another one of those power sets that's like, okay, I mean... She also builds up kinetic force or something, yeah. maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, hey, that'd be dope if she could, like, untelescope, like, a spring yeah. and, like, do super Just, powerful headbutts or something. Like, yeah. Sure, maybe. Um, <laughs> trying to think of anything else that we really get to see. We, uh, like, half of the people who are going to pass this test have already passed it. We are already, like, oh, yeah. well beyond, yep. like, decently beyond the, the 50 people rank of the hundred people are making it in and as of yet we have not heard anything about any of our 1a reps making it through so yep nor have we seen any of them take a hit except for yeah. deku who definitively takes a hit from shape shifty girl yeah yeah uh, that's a really good shot too i love i love the framing of that mm -hmm. and todoroki and bakugo we know are kind of off on their own the earthquake that the one guy sets up sort of splits a lot of people up yeah um and Todoroki's the only one we really get to check in with uh, when he runs into our rainbow squad of ninjas. Uh, 
And that, that's when we learned that tungsten can take a lot of heat and not melt. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's neat. Yeah. We learned something yeah. today Science. about tungsten. Yep. Does seem... I mean, here's the thing. If a large metal object is hurtling towards you, I don't think heating that up that was to a molten thought. state is a very smart idea. That was kind of where I was, because I was like, okay, he's going to throw this thing at him. Like, so your goal is to just erect ice walls to stop everything that's coming at yeah. Oh, no, we're going to try and melt this and exacerbate this problem? Okay. Yeah. okay. That seems real bad. <laughs> Having yeah. molten lava flying at me seems it way scarier. Seems bad in a way that this show usually isn't. It seems... Filler bad. Yeah, how about the fact that his power is that he can grow things, and yet he's also able to break the ice by throwing a bunch of nails at his feet? Yeah, that's, that seems like also... I mean, that's just one of those comic book logic things. I can't say I didn't notice it, but I can't say it bothered Might me. Might be like working at like an ice pick, and he's just like, all right, I'll throw these small nails or whatever, and then grow them once they're inside the ice to like shatter it. Like that's 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 what how I took it anyway. Yeah. It was just like I'm going to yeah. put these little things in the tiny crevices his ice has made, and then expand them to just shatter it. I mean, I do like, oh, I do like his power in general. The mm. idea of just like, oh, I can grow stuff. So why don't I just hold a bunch of stuff, like, little things little, in my pocket, and throw little them. incredibly hard mm. things? So when I throw them and grow them, I can crush people. That's such a cool yeah, idea. Yeah, that's cool. Now, is this Ant-Man style where supposedly it becomes more dense when it's smaller and less dense when it's bigger, but in practice they never stick to that? <laughs> oh my god, that's so... Uh, uh, god, Ant-Man 2. Oh, we've shrunk the building down. Okay, you wouldn't be able to move it. Yep. Yeah, your own <laughs> logic, your own internal logic that you set up in the first movie makes that impossible. Oh, what? I mean, they, they broke that halfway through the first movie a couple of times, just not quite so egregiously. <laughs> yeah. Man. It's like, why Why are you taking such special care to set up these rules if you're not going to bother with them? Honestly, I think this dude has, like, the best power. Cause you, can you imagine just going to, like, McDonald's, like, I'll get a small fry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you could solve world hunger. If yeah, it, we good. Assuming it works that way. See, for me, if I had that power, I would always just get on a plane. Like, I would shrink all of my stuff down and be mm -hmm. like... I got nothing. Yeah, yeah. traveling light. Fucking carry on, motherfuckers. Yep. <laughs> Never have to worry about a checked bag again. Boom, yeah. here's my car. I took it with me. <laughs> <laughs> Rental car? Fuck that. I got this Hot Wheels case. Yeah, no, see, Dragon Ball had to ride with the capsules. Yep. The yeah. best. Yep. Anyway, so. Hey, what do you know? Eggplants. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you think? It's the best Shonen series out there right now, and that's, not, okay, that's kind of a backhanded compliment. Um, yeah, but, but it's up there in series in general if we're talking coming out actively right this second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's one of the best shows this season. It's still it's still my hero academia. I'm loving it. Uh, yeah. This this episode in general is not is isn't even like worse than general. It's just also like okay, cool. We're doing more of the battle stuff. It's an episode where it feels like a lot happened, but also. It feels like nothing of major import happened, I guess. Like it's it felt like a lot of like just setting up. Like it's like, okay, we're here, we're getting everybody split up so we don't have this like group dynamic that we had at the end of the last episode where they seemed unstoppable because they're like, We're united as friends. Yeah. Uh, and this episode was all about, all right, well now you have to rely on yourself. Go. And I, I'm just hoping we get more like character stuff and less like situational stuff, I guess. Because that's, I think, where my hero shines the most. And as we said before, uh, this author frequently will kind of do a good bait and switch on you. So I'm, I'm guessing that's kind of where we're going to be going. But it's just looking forward to it. Yep. Yeah. Also, that one dude looks like One, point, one Punch Android 17. Oh, All right. Yeah. See you next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're right. <laughs> right? <Huh. laughs> Now, nah, we'll see y'all next week for more One Punch Android 17. <laughs> I like the animation of him catching it. That, that was actually really good. I, I'd like the Sakuga on the show. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>